Anyway, guys, welcome, welcome to you. Today, we are back with another stream from Visionary Realms and the Pantheon development team. Uh, for any of you that may not know, Pantheon is an MMO in development by Visionary Realms uh, that is a real kind of reimagining of an MMO style that has long since departed this world. Uh, kind of the more classic, more group focused, more um, really kind of more just brutally, realistically fun MMOs that a lot of us really miss, especially us old folks. Um, however, there's an entire generation that has never seen them before, so, or this, this style of MMO before. So it's gonna be really fun to not only play this game when it comes out, um, but also see how it takes in. So what we're gonna be doing today is doing a very special dev stream called The Making of a City. We're actually gonna be make, uh, meeting one of the new devs, or a newer to the team dev. He's gonna be doing a, a lot of talking today about it. And uh, really, without further delay, Ben, why don't you introduce us to who we're here with today? Hey guys, uh, this is Ben Dean. I'm the Director of Communications for Visionary Realms and Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Well, as Co mentioned, we're going to have a really awesome stream today. We're going to look behind the scenes. We're going to see uh, kind of a work in progress. Um, and without further ado, I'll introduce you to somebody you should already know if you've been watching the streams before. Uh, we've got Chris Perkins with us, our Creative Director. Hey everybody, really excited to be here. This is going to be a really fun stream. And um, also, like Co said, excited to introduce you guys to Jared Pullen. He is our lead concept artist. Um, his passion is genuine and infectious, and uh, really happy to have him on the stream. So, welcome, Jared. Ah, oh, cheers, Chris. So happy to be here, man. It's it's a pleasure and an honor. Hello tell and welcome, Jared. <laughs> hey, Just tell us cheers, really quick, Co. Jared, what you do, man. What do you do on right. the uh, team? Well, uh, essentially, apart from being full-time cheerleader on this team and just keeping everybody happy, which is uh, it's, it's a pretty worthwhile thing doing, uh, I'm the lead concept artist on Pantheon for VR, and uh, my duties include looking after the visual bar, helping to um, basically set the visual standard and develop the look and feel of the game, whether that's uh, architecture, environments, um, setting up motifs and emblem suites for cultures, and just coming up with racial identities in conjunction with our other very talented concept artist. Forest and Mill. So, yeah, just really excited to be here. Really, really jazzed to be a part of this. So, awesome. Thanks for having me. Great. Beautiful. So, what are we doing today, Chris? Well, we are going to be taking a good look at the City of Throne Fast, which we have here in front of us. Um, before we do that, though, quickly, in our last stream, you guys met our technical artist, Bruno Rhyme, mm -hmm. and we showed off the first round of visual updates that he's been working on. And we also told you that it was only the beginning, that more goodness was gonna be coming out as we move along. And so we wanted to start this stream with some more of that goodness and just take a quick look at the new grass system that Bruno has put together. So Co, anywhere that you look where you see a patch of grass in front of you, um, why don't you head over there? And uh, Bruno you know, would do a much better job than I will, much more articulate job. But I just wanna kinda cover a, a few of the highlights um, first of all, Bruno built this grass to properly receive the lighting information in the zone, um, yeah. uh, to make the most of all the hard work that he's been doing with our lighting overall, which we highlighted in the last stream. Um, so that's one of the major differences in the grass from that stream and now this new system. Also, if you look straight down, uh, Co, at, at one of the patches of grass uh, that you're standing in, you'll see that there's a lot of really good undergrowth going on in addition to the blades of grass. and um, that really allows us to cover the ground in a much more realistic way. It just adds to the fullness of the ground cover. It's much more realistic. Um, and this is only the first iteration. So as we get more and more grass types and um, undergrowth types, uh, it's going to give us a really nice um, variety of environments that we can cover. And, and, and then lastly, one of my favorite parts about it is the displacement. Uh, when you run through the grass, it will actually move and displace as you travel through it. And um, this is pretty short grass that obviously the taller the grass is, the more noticeable the effect will be, but it's gonna allow us to do some really striking things visually in certain areas of the game um, when, when we're using more than just basic grass. Um, it's, a really, it's really cool tech that uh, adds a lot just to the different environments and it's just part of dialing everything in. So good job, Bruno. Very yeah. cool. So enough about the new grass. So this stream is about the city and the mm -hmm. making of a city. So why don't we go ahead and cross the bridge here? If I could just make a recommendation before we do so, 
This is best experienced with uh, the UI off and in first person. You'll get kind of the yeah. whole experience that way. That's just my little tip of the day. Yeah, perfect. Mm-hmm. Nice. Done and done. We are in. All right. Let's do it. So, as you guys, I'm sure, are aware, MMOs are just huge productions. There's so many moving parts, so many things being developed at once. So, why a city stream? Um, I think, for one, it gives us a chance to introduce Jared and uh, largely what Jared has been working on of late. Um, with uh, with Justin Gerhardt, our lead writer, is the uh, conceptualization of Thronefast as a whole, uh, not just the city, but um, the iconography, the color palette. Jared will talk a lot more about this once we get in. Yeah. Um, but then also with Pre Alpha One on the horizon, we we really wanted to start dialing in this major city. It's going to be a pretty key part of the uh, the new player experience in this area, and yeah. so this gives us a chance um, to show off what as a team has been our chance to start executing on our vision for cities, what we want cities in Pantheon to be. And so we wanted to uh, just kind of invite you guys in to somewhat of a behind the scenes. Um, ben will uh, reiterate this um, as we move along. This is uh, certainly early in the process, um, but we wanted to give you guys kind of that behind the scenes look at uh, how it's shaping up and coming together. Yeah, so I'm not were... sure if you planned this, by the way, but the music automatically kicked in when you started talking, and we had a little Braveheart moment as we <laughs> yeah. ran across that bridge. <laughs> that's awesome. That was pretty that's good. Not playing, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Cool. <laughs> um, awesome stuff. Yeah, so you probably noticed as you were crossing the bridge, what I love about this and why I suggested doing first person is that it really illustrates the grandeur of the city and all of the work it's that our huge. artists... and the, Yeah, right? And as you get closer to the gate, you just start realizing, my God, this place is huge. It's just it's just really majestic. So I think the artists and the whole team really nailed what we were going for here. Um, and yeah, to reiterate what Chris was saying, uh, for the remainder of the stream, we just ha- have to keep in mind that this is for pre-alpha. Pre-alpha is coming up this year, um, mm-hmm. so be prepared for that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, So it, it's very much a work in progress. We're going to see sort of how a city is developed and, and what it's what it looks like behind the scenes before it becomes what the kind of thing that you're seeing right now in front of you. Um, oh, very much so. Yeah. Just uh, just to let everybody know as well that we are uh, closing off the pre-alpha access pledges on the uh, 26th at midnight Pacific of this time month. of this month. So, so that, five that gives, days from now. Exactly. Um, okay. That that will well. Sorry, I should I should <laughs> I should restate that. We're closing off the, the the pledge packages at least for the payment options on the 26th, and then on the 20th of December is the last day to purchase a package that includes pre-alpha, because we're really really close and our numbers are uh, are getting to the point where we want them for pre-alpha, so we're going to have to shut it off. But um, anyway, without further ado, um, mm-hmm. this would be a perfect opportunity to. You're seeing the gate in front of us now, so if you bring up pick one. Gate A. We'll Got sort of see right where this started, and uh, I'll hand it back to Kristen and uh, Jared. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's great. So we're going to go through the um, the image sequence here. Is that correct? Yep. I uh, currently have image one on the screen. Beautiful. Awesome. So I'll I'll say something real quick, and then Jared, I'm going to hand it to you to kind of walk through this. But um, what you guys are going to see on the other side of this gate is a process uh, known as gray boxing, where we take mm-hmm. primitive shapes, um, squares, rectangles, things like that, and begin to um, block out the uh, the actual final shape of the meshes, and then the placement of those meshes to develop the the layout as a whole. Um, but so while you're going to see this, this gray boxing material on the other side of the gate, we wanted to take this opportunity to show you what this process actually looks like from start to finish, um, starting with, uh, you know, Justin and Jared meeting to go over the, the lore of what each individual piece is, um, Jared doing his initial pencil sketches, and uh, really the process all the way through. So, Jared, do you want to walk us through quickly kind of what that process looks like from... Uh, concept and uh, all the way through to placement awesome yeah absolutely chris thanks for that matey um yeah like like chris was saying it really is a process and it doesn't just begin a concept it begins much earlier than that um with ideation and conceptualization at the at the law stage and we have a really talented writer justin gearhart and he is off the hook 
and knows his business. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we get together and we think, you know, we think about the possibilities. We really get deep in the law. We think about the history that shaped this place. And we just think about all the little nuances and subtleties. And then it's, it's my job to extract that and showcase that law as best I can. And basically that is a real process. So we get the law in place. I'll take keynotes down and we'll have what we call a jam session. And you'll see evidence of a jam session a little bit later on when we get to, uh, when we get further down into uh, where Camp Padark is, but I, I won't get ahead of myself. But um, yeah, basically we do a jam session. Justin will, will speak and he will speak of his law. And I will literally just start laying down some lines and go, okay, so you think it's like this? What sort of iconic signifies can we inject into this building? You know, what are the themes here? What is, what is the imagery? What can we play off? And pretty soon, a really, like it's a rough sketch, but it's a really good, strong, preliminary beginning uh, for the visual development. And, and that's, from there, that's yeah. sort of what we're seeing on, <clears throat> on the screen now, right? The, the, this sort of first sketch. That's it. Yeah, that's the rough, uh, basically the, the rough uh, first pass, you could say. What's and really cool, there, I love seeing yeah. notes on this picture that you can <clears> then <throat> tab back to the door and see the notes in action, <laughs> like these little mud doors yep. at the bottom. That's so cool. Yeah, well, one of the biggest things here was we needed to get that grandeur here. Like we needed to suggest, hey, man, this is really old. This building is like over 500 years old. And it's, it's steeped in lore and mythology, and it's got that iconography going on. But what was really important to inject into Thronefast was scale. When you've got stuff on a really big magnitude, it's really, really easy to forget your density of detail, especially at player height. So little cues like um, the small, I, I call them man doors, so that, um, you know, you lock this thing at night, and if you really wanted to get in, you wouldn't ask the guy to open the whole door. No, you'd slither in through the back door here, you know, or through the little door. And while they're big, we had to accommodate also the lowest common denominator, which is the ogre. So we had to be very mindful, very, very careful in our planning uh, for camera clearances uh, and standardizing our heights and our width. So while we're also coming up with law and trying to inject that in the visual sense, there's also a technical veneer that goes over top of that. We're so always mindful. Is, the, is this where, where we can take a look at uh, image two? Does that uh, reflect yes. what, Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Image from here is up. Cool. So what are you seeing there, Co? You're seeing the... Uh... I'm seeing all the thinking behind almost every aspect of this door. <laughs> this would be the render. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. So basically after it goes through a, uh, a period of vetting with uh, Chris Chopper Perkins and Justin, and they say, yes, you've nailed it, or no, back to the salt mines with you. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, generally I escape the salt mines. Pretty relatively. much always nail it, Jared. <laughs> I, I try, I try. By the sweat of my brow, I try. But um, yeah, these guys are awesome and they make it all worthwhile and yeah, they get the best out of me, that's for sure. So yeah, the render is pretty much actuating all the notes and all the particulars, putting that, just the love, it's the love pass. That's the way I call it. So yeah, yeah. So Without from there, love, we, don't have we, go to, <laughs> we go to the third image and that would be the... Uh, the mesh phase where the wire mm, mesh the wire mesh that's right we hand it over to yeah. uh to jerry our uh our, our 3d artist currently working on um these thrown fast assets and he uh works up the the mesh and that mesh then if you go to image four is um actually placed in the scene so the fourth image there is what that gray box um material we were talking about earlier what that actually looks like when you place it um, as Jared would say, in situ or in situation in the actual scene. And um, it gives us an idea of whether our scales are right, um, yeah. whether our uh, just the shape and everything we've envisioned on, on paper, so to speak, is actually uh, manifesting the way we want it to in the game world. Um, and then from there, uh, image five is, um, as Jerry takes that mesh uh, a few steps further, he ends up uh, finishing the modeling and and the texturing. And so then all of that wonderful stuff you see in the render, um, that second image comes to life in the actual model, the 3D model itself. Um, and then from there, the final image is the actual placement of the final model, which is what we have in front of us right here. And uh, it's really an amazing process when you think about it um, from start to finish. And just mm. knowing that that level of detail and thoughtfulness goes into every piece um, the the identity of these people, the the thrown fastian humans, um, 
really shines through in an amazing way. And, uh, and that's our goal with all of these, these cities, because with all of our races, we want that unique punch, um, where when you see a thrown fast, uh, piece of architecture somewhere in the world, um, you, you know, this is, this is thrown fastian in nature, or this is dwarven in nature because so much is, uh, imbued into the pieces themselves from start to finish. Very yeah, absolutely. Cool. So before we go in, um, just to reiterate, what we're about to see is very early. It's pre-alpha stuff. It's what our pre-alpha pledgers can expect to see. So it's a very, very much a work in progress. It's but what's really cool about it is is it's really behind the behind the scenes type stuff. So. Mm -hmm. If you're in pre-alpha, you'll get to see the world, get to be in part of the set as the world is being built around you. You'll be right in the action, finding the bu bugs, offering the, the feedback. Um, again, we can't have too many people in for this phase as it is really super early, so we're shutting it off um, on the 20th of December is your last chance. But, uh, but it's a really great opportunity to see how a game is built from the ground up and be a part of it, be right in the action. And Ben, for the record, because um, we've seen a lot of people talking about this in my channel lately, this pre-alpha is not designed for people that just want to play the game early, right? This is for people Correct. that want to actually help make the game, essentially. Exactly, and okay. that's mm. that's a fundamental differentiator. It's not early access, so you can't really view it as early access. Technically, you'll be in the game, but it's going to be you know planned out sessions, planned out test sessions. Um, there's going to be uh, we're going to be needing a lot of feedback. We're going to be testing very specific things, and you'll be seeing a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff as we been discussing so without further ado maybe we should head on in and show you the kind of things that we're talking about oh let's do it all right so if you type in cord uh space uh oh what's the <laughs> what's the cord oh uh, the guards are talking to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool uh it's uh city demo three co city all one word three. lowercase c-o-o-r-d space city and demo, demo three, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I typed it in group chat there. Too. Oh, with a slash. Got it. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, before long, we'll actually be able to walk walk through the door. We haven't um, mm. we haven't gotten the actual door functionality in yet because we want to do something uh, pretty special for this guy. Um, so for now, we just kind of hop over on the other side. But welcome to the city of Throne Fast, and uh, as it's being built, as it is being yeah. built. That's right, Jared. Why don't you That's take it away? And I think there's some. Uh, some pretty good stuff to talk about here even just in this front little uh first little part we're in so where are we and awesome why does it look like this cool can do chris yeah it's um this is almost like the punchline to a bit of a preamble that we've set up outside the gates before the bridge um in the last stream you may have noticed the big arch city gateways there that um you guys were cruising around they got the banners and there's a beautiful inscription on the bottom of that which alludes to um, the flavor and the ideology of the throne Faustian uh, humans. And basically, you'll be passing beneath those arches, and you'll be like, well, what is this piece? You know, it's like a little sliver of lore, a nugget of lore, but you'll get the payoff when you come in here. <clears throat> so basically, when you enter this gate, it's called a killway. It doesn't have a very nice name, but it serves a very, very particular function. This is basically designed to, in the event of a siege, could be completely sealed off. But it serves more than that. It's it's also a bit of narrative um, environmental storytelling. It's what we're looking for. So imagine before you, you'll see two great stone lion-esque creatures. And within the middle, they're actually flanking the particular inscription, which finishes the sentence that is inscribed thereon upon the arch city gateways. So you'll have a little aha moment like, wow, I've arrived. And everything leading up to this is, is designed to introduce this particular moment. So the first thing you'll, you'll see, you'll be greeted with the two lines there, very grand, but you'll also be assailed uh, in the audio and with your audio sensors as well. So this is where the audio cues come in and basically you're presented with a choice. And this was really important to us because not only is an MMO important, you know, it's, it's great to have choices. It almost says a lot about the player. So you would be presented with a left or a right choice. And the reasons for that is on, on your, on your uh, left here, You'll have all the sounds of the dark. So you'll have the men training. You'll have the sounds of swords and steel clashing. You'll have you know, the grunts and the, and the vigor of men as they go about their business, you know, training to be men at arms and protectors and defenders of the city. So that's the militant and the civic side, right? But on your right, by contrast, you've got the temple and the causeway of Coursera here with the pergola, which we'll get to. So you can expect to hear the ambience of... Um, 
holy priests chanting. Uh, it's very peaceful. It's very loving. It's very nurturing. So by contrast, you've got the militant side and then you've got the spiritual side of the city. So immediately the player is presented with this, oh, wow, well, where, where do I fit? And they'll be lured one way or another. And it's just, it'll be interesting to see what players choose just out of, yeah. you know, some conscious effort. So, yeah, like we'll have, we'll have the bards in here. So you'll have the ambience of singing. You'll have, the, you know, the priests of Coursera. And you'll have Camp Badak with all the, uh, all the audio cues there of men going about their work. Well, let's, uh, uh, military power. let's go mm. check out Badark. Awesome. I'm down. Let's do it. Let's go. Ooh. So basically, what you're seeing here, again, is a gray box mesh. This is, um, while in and of itself, you might think, oh, well, not particularly spectacular. That's because it's missing a lot of the density of detail. But what it does is it serves as a really, really useful tool uh, to developing scale. Developing scale, uh, spatial relationships between buildings, uh, between aspects of itself. So, yeah, it becomes a really, really useful tool. And not only does it help to establish these spatial relationships and relationships with other buildings, we can then determine, is the building too big? Is it too far away from the start point to be useful to the player? Is it too much of a grind to get there? Is it too close to this other building and it's robbing from the other building's uh, framing and composition and grandeur? So there's a lot of thought that goes into placing even <laughs> these boxes. And basically, end of the day, we use this... Um, to determine, you know, even to place NPCs so we can get a staggered pipeline going so that our, our level Ds aren't gated by concept up. I got to admit, and, it is so cool hearing the thinking behind all this and more importantly, knowing that all the care that's going into it. I swear sometimes MMOs these days, the lore system is like a dartboard of random words that they just throw <laughs> them at. And then they bring up an RNG generator for their cities and just put buildings and stuff everywhere. So this is cool <laughs> knowing that like, this is kind of what we're going to be looking forward to in this game. Let's oh. take a look at um, at picture number seven while we're here checking out the dark. Awesome. And um, yeah, while we're doing that, I'll, I'll give you a little preamble. And this is direct from our lore master too. So awesome stuff. Um, it says he has for me Camp Bedark. It says the primary housing and training ground for garrisons of the Thronefast regulars. Bedark is a bulwark of Thronefastian military power. Built into the very walls of the capital itself, the camp allows for rapid deployment within on top or outside of the city, while scores of soldiers training therein provide chaotic rhythms of battle to ears of passers-by. So he paints a very vivid picture, and he certainly makes my job that much easier. <laughs> so what you're going to see, man, is like, see all these pillars here? It's about layers. We're going to introduce these POIs, these points of interest in layers. So you'll see, you'll hear it first, you'll be drawn to it, and then you'll see key elements but they won't be revealed to you all at once. Um, these big pillars are basically huge. Um, I call them scratching posts, but imagine like three or four men around each one and they're striking and they're attacking and you hear the drill sergeant, you know, ordering them different forms of attack. So it's just packed with soldiers. And we're even thinking about a little bit of environmental storytelling, you know, cracks in the wall here. So you can take a peek, get an inside lane on what's going on in thrown fast, but don't get caught because the drill sergeant might find you. So it's just little nuances like that that um, pique player interest. But yeah, Badak has a couple of sections. It's obviously it's got the military side where the men train, and it's got the mess hall outside where they basically, you know, they'll take the take the greaves and van braces off and chill out for a little bit over a bit of mead. And then you've got the admin side, which is this building here. Speaking of mead, is there a place? close by where we can go to get a drink <laughs> two <laughs> seconds while we're doing that guys i gotta bring up our oh keep going keep going i just gotta bring up the images again awesome yeah, yeah. i was just saying funny you should say that actually because there is there is well there's our barracks behind too we didn't see that mm. no we did we ran yeah, over there yeah co ran over there oh you did oh you guys did i was i was too busy <laughs> caught up in, <laughs> in my spiel no awesome. and camp of dark so, yes. uh, this is you know when we talk about class identity as well i mean um if you are uh, planning to be a, a human warrior, uh, for example, that would be um, most likely where you would start your journey the very first time um, mm -hmm. in or near Camp of Dark where your, uh, your class master would be um, and where you'd have a lot of interactions throughout your journey. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that where it's relevant as far as the, uh, the starting positions for the different classes and developing some of that initial identity for your uh, your journey. Um, 
Yeah, we can we can move through some of these buildings pretty quickly. I mean, this is this is standard fare for the most part. Um, we have a tavern, uh, obviously a, a a pretty sizable uh, one for the size of the city that we're in. This is um very uh it's an important meeting place. Um, important. Can the tavern uh, really ever be too big? <laughs> yeah. Well, this one dynamically grows. Um, it just kind of just grows and expands as it as it uh, as it needs to. A okay. magic mm. tavern. Yeah, it's a little bit of a TARDIS effect going on there. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To be clear, it, it doesn't magically name. grow. <laughs> Full disclaimer: taverns do not actually glow and are not magical. Yeah. Oh, man, you had to roll on the disclaimer. At the end. <laughs> it glows. That's, that's some part of my job. I'm afraid I have to bring it us back to reality every once in a while. Yeah. Um, if there's just... ever a Joppa themed weapon that drops in the game, the uh, flavor text will be it glows. Mm. No, if you're just actually joining us not. for the stream, what you're seeing on screen right now is Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, an upcoming MMO developed by Visionary Realms. We're show showing off Thronefast, which is one of our major capital cities in the game, as it's being developed. So you're seeing a lot of gray boxes, which is just a work in progress. It's uh, behind the scenes, on the set type stuff as it's being built. And if you're wondering why you don't see a lot of this stuff normally, it's because a lot of times devs don't include people in this part mm -hmm. of the process. This is, this is mm -hmm. usually the stuff that only devs see. That's so this is kind of the Pantheon guys letting us see under the hood, seeing it, you know, when it's actually being created. Not when it's just the pretty final product that looks really nice. Like, they're actually kind of letting us take a glimpse at what they're doing, so. Exactly. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's a really nice. good point because we're, we're sort of trying to, we're having like a mini wager in, in the office trying to determine. We, I, I believe that we may be the first game, or at least the first MMO, to let this many people in at this stage um, to help us test, uh, because it's, it really is a lot earlier than, than I've seen from pretty much anybody else. Um, but that's part of the fun. We want you guys to be a part of it and uh, and develop as we go, or give your feedback, and oh, help us that, find the bugs. Yeah. Well, let's keep moving Absolutely. through. Let's <laughs> keep moving through this. Um, we moved from the tavern to this building we've been looking at here for a little bit is the bank. Um, the Vassar and Trust, uh, as it's called. Mm. And just a quick word about this, you know, we, we want um, visits to the city to not be um, a drain. And uh, for a city this size, you know, if we have the bank, it, you know, all the way in the back, um, every time you need to come to Throne Fast to bank, we don't want it to be a chore. We want coming to cities. Um, I don't know how much we're going to get into this in this stream. It's certainly something we can talk about more down the road. But just our plans for cities and the philosophy behind the content um, we want to have in cities. We don't want them to be huge, heavy resource, heavy development uh, things that just become glorified banks um, yeah. down the road that players never come to because it's it's uh, there's nothing to do there or it just takes so long to get anywhere. But we like having the bank right here towards the front, and um, it's it's kind of a philosophy we have with all of our cities to make sure that the the general services that players need in the cities are pretty easy um, to get to if you're here just to be in and out. Um, but then we also have really big plans for some of the actual content um, unique to our cities uh, that we'll talk more about down the road as well that I'm, I'm really excited about. If, you, if you've got 15 minutes to log into Pantheon and play, we want cities to be a place where you could feel satisfied in what you can accomplish, what you can discover, what you can find, um, in a city in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, yeah. um, if, if you just have that amount of time to log into Pantheon. So I know that's, that's vague intentionally, but, um, got some really cool, really exciting ideas on how to, how to, uh, make cities a really interesting, fun, incentivizing, even in some ways place to, to go and spend some time whenever you have to go or whenever you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. Chris. So we're l running a little bit short on time, so let's just talk very, very quickly about uh, the market and then head on to our next point of interest. Awesome. Thank Take it away, Jerry. Great, yeah. Well, now basically, this um, this is Peace Made Plaza. It was very important to us to develop that uh, community feel, and this has very much gone through the same process as we, we do the buildings. And I'll get into the buildings later with floor plans and all that sort of stuff uh, when we get further down, but... These markets, it was very much creating avenues, creating rows, making sure that we had that community feel and providing opportunity for the uh, for the classes as well to like get in there and, and be able to like you know, pilfer items and get behind the vendors. Like not all of these stalls will be managed. Not all of these stalls will be run by vendors. 
you'll see some variety in there. And what you'll see is, um, I think there's a whole bunch of concept art there too that uh, supports the notion of variety in here. And we've got different colored awnings that suggest the different classes of stalls. So for instance, um, you know, if we've got something to do with the thrown fast regulars, yeah. Uh, if whole... you want to bring up uh, shot mm. number eight there, Co. Yep. You'll see what it means. It's on the screen eight, right eight now. Eight and nine, and nine as well. Cool. You can awesome. Sort of flip between them. Ooh. Cool, cool, cool. So right down to the wire, we, before we do any props, we do these things called emblem suites in which we break down the shape conventions and all the iconic signifiers of every race. And then we try to inject that iconography into just about everything without it being too tiresome. You'll notice that the throne fast arches or the arches of Haven song motif is also present in the stalls, not in game, but in the concept art. So what you're seeing here are proxies placed in. And these are these serve two functions. One, they give us spatial relationships, um, not only with each other, but with different POIs in the, in the level. They tell us, is this place too big? Is it too small? But it also allows our level designers to go in and actually create a staker pipeline by placing NPCs, placing their vendors. They're not gated by us at all. So as we create um, more art, they are pushing forward with creating the gameplay experience. So yeah, Greybox is such a wonderful tool for rapid prototyping. I cannot stress it enough. It's great. It's really good stuff. Well, let's head on mm. over, over, over <clears throat> to the forum where we can see a little bit more mm. advanced Greyboxing, if you will. <laughs> 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 if that's a term. If not, we're coining it today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Peyton, that one. I like it. <laughs> so we're actually cruising past the fabled Arches of Haven song. We'll get into that later as it's further developed, but this is a treasure of Throne Fast. It's an iconic jewel within the heart of the city. We didn't want the markets. We were mindful. We didn't want the market and the busyness of the bazaar type market to, to basically muddy up the grandeur of that. So we gave it its own space, and you'll be seeing that, uh, no doubt, subsequently. Okay, okay. Here we are, Forum of Asirico. Quick side note, weather effects are coming along very nicely, especially the atmosphere <laughs> and the clouds. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. cool. Excellent. Yeah, I can Go Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's All fire right. up the uh, the form of a Sirico render. Mm. Um, that is 11, whoa. I think. Cool. The render. Ah, here we yeah, go. 11. Okay, cool. Oh, so, oh, this is, sorry, this is this is the uh, this is the hammer anvil. Awesome. Is that what you're talking about, Chris? Well, they're one and the same. the The forum and the anvil are both included in the. Render image. So that's that's number twelve then that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's one with the anvil by itself, and then there's um, in isolation, and then there's a there's a composite with the two of them I got together. You. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and pull that's up the one. one. That's the, the one with both of them. Yep. Great. On the screen, yes, please. Awesome. Cheers, Co. So um, yeah, basically this is um, again it's a combination of a lot of blood, sweat, and tears from law, from concept, and from uh, our director Chris Jopper Perkins, and basically what will happen here is. I'll, I'll do a rough sketch uh, in a jam session, similar to the um, to the red line work you saw for Badark. And Justin will talk to me. He'll say, "This man, this is what I need. This is what I need. these are the the key points." And then I'll just go over top of that, and we'll just iterate. Literally, I will share my screen, and we will do it in 20 minutes. And go right. How about this? And then once he's now done the particulars and likes what he sees, it's um I go and do a, a more final sketch, which is it's still rough, but it's got all those you know all those keynotes in it. And then from there. Um, the guys can actually go ahead and start messing around with a bit of gray box mesh, just preliminary stuff. And then I will carve off and go ahead and do a floor plan. Now, it's important to note that our buildings aren't just shelves. They are functioning, uh, well thought out, well laid out buildings. Um, there's a lot of thought to ca uh, camera, to composition, uh, to clearances, and all sorts of things like that. And that is done at the floor plan level. So... You may see the floor plan there. I do believe we have the art for that. And that just goes to show you how much um, intentional thought and planning goes into it at this level. And then the guys from the floor plan, uh, guys like Jerry and Ben, our very talented mesh guys, can then go in and lift mesh straight off the floor plan and elevate the mesh up and you know project their walls and just get a really good shell in. And then while I'm rendering the exterior of the building, they're laying out the block out stuff. So again, staggered pipeline, Nobody's gated. Everybody's happy, which is awesome in my book. 
So yeah, um, the law component of this one here is uh, it's in line with the um, the human pantheon and the particular patron deity of this building. His name is Asirico. He's also known as the blind fate smith. Now, a blind fate smith, you have to have an anvil. So I was like, that was the imagery that was you know that was crying out for uh, exploration there. But uh, essentially, he hammers out the key events of all time. That's his that's his bent. A and the fate logic behind. Smith. He is. That is an He's a blind. interesting concept. I like that. A fate smith. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, kudos to Justin for coming up with that because that's just really unique. But, um, yeah, the, the whole premise behind the anvil is we've got the scroll or the record of fates, and you can see that on the render. Basically, unrecorded time rolls in across the face of the anvil, and Osirico will smash down with his hammer and record the major event, and then from there on it is forever recorded. And you can actually, the goal, and you'll see it uh, mirrored on the floor plan, is this aspect of the law, the uh, record of fates, scrolls up and around. It's set in the floor. Players will be able to run around it. They'll be able to run on it, put foot to, you know, to stone, and they'll be able to follow it as it weaves through the entire building, culminating up into the major POI for this um, particular building, which also functions as a law court, and that's the Dome of Time on top. And you can see in the render there that the record or scroll of fates actually is bound up in the dome and the negative space is um, all glass, colored glass. So you're going to get this thick miasma of radiating light, you know, coming down onto the central court chamber where your defendant will stand alone on a plinth and defend and plead his case. So it's just, there's just so much thought that goes into this. And it really is a testament to the entire team. Because not only is there thought involved, I, I think it's just a huge aspect of love and care. Mm. Because we treasure our audience, and that's the way it's always going to be. I have to say, uh, with MMO's last 10 years, <laughs> seeing this much thought going into one building in one <laughs> city that's one of many player races that will have cities is kind of nuts. It's kind of <laughs> <it's kinda> nuts. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It really is. Oh, man. Awesome, it's man. very refreshing. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Awesome. It's crazy refreshing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we head to the temple? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So it's Cord City oh. Demo 5, I think. Yes. My spell fizzled. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Cord City Demo 5. Oh. Well, I was going to get some exercise and just run it. <laughs> yeah. Is that glass I see? It is. Ooh. It is indeed. It is indeed. I like these advanced shadows on the gray box. I feel immersed. Uh -huh. I do. <laughs> Again, if you're just joining us, what you're seeing now is Pantheon Rise of the Fall Fallen as it's being built in progress. Um, you can expect to see this sort of thing in pre-alpha one and just watch the war as the world gets built around you and be part of it. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Absolutely. Yeah, so again, you're seeing more of the same approach. Um, yeah, gray boxing to get the spatial relationships and the scale right just before we uh, go over top with that uh, visual pass. So the premise for this building is it's very much um, it's the holy temple. It's very much uh, in tune with kindness, care. Um, these guys, these are the Corsairan priesthood, and they uh, basically um, minister the people in the area, and they are basically aligned with uh, got alignment with water here there's a lot of movement here so essentially and I won't be giving away too much if I say this <laughs> but what we want to do is we don't want to make static buildings we don't want these static monoliths or edifices anywhere we want motion we want you know light changing shifting lights banners shifting water falling so the premise for this building is the whole front facade is this crystalline sheet of water just cascading over ribbed glass. So you're going to get that shift of light, you're going to get the change in the caustics, and it's all about healing water and peace and tranquility. And essentially on top, it's going to have this big buttress that radiates off the top here. So it's going to have no sharp corners, it's all going to be rounded, it's going to feel softer. Those are the shape conventions there to uh, invite you in and relax you a little bit more. Now, with a, with a beautiful garden on top, like, you know, imagine a really beautiful, almost like sakura tree, you know, radiating off the top of that, petals are falling down. So it's not just, it's not just a building. It's wow. a zone. It's an emotional zone. It's it's environmental storytelling, and that's what we're trying to get. Every time you get to a building, 
you're going to feel something a little bit different. And it won't feel out of place with the rest of the city because the shape conventions from the emblem suite and those dynamics are already set. So we can draw from those. It'll feel cohesive, but it's going to feel unique in the same breath. So that's what we're trying to get, man. It's just unique POIs, really well imagined, really well thought out um, from, a, from a team that cares about it. So, yeah. I cannot wait to stand right where I am standing right now and see everything you just said in front of me because that <laughs> sounds incredible. When you say that, it reminds me of a conversation that we had yesterday. What did you say, Jared? It's not, it's not what you're uh, uh, what you're seeing. It's what you're not seeing. What, what, how did you word that? The temptation with gray box, and it is it is a bit of a trap, is to see what's there, and feel that you have nothing, to feel that you're lacking something. It's less about what you don't see, and more about the promise of what you will what you will get. So these, oh, I, you know, I want the owners to go, man, there's a gray box. Okay, there's promise here. What will the team bring? And and we will bring it. We will definitely bring it. There's so much planned in here. This is a tool. You guys are getting a, uh, you know, a window in, a backstage pass into how we go about this process. But it's more about the promise of what will be over a really good plan. And I think it's really easy to just draw a building and put it in, but then you end up retrofitting it. The themes aren't right. You know, this stuff's supposed to be like five, six hundred years old, so it's got to be well thought out. It's got to be well established. Okay. So that's the thinking that goes into it. So yeah, less about what's not there and more about the promise of what will be. So yeah, and we plan to deliver on that promise. And with that, shall we head back to the entrance, folks? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's do I'm, it. I am really looking forward to watching this VOD in a, in a year, two years, three years, <laughs> just seeing all of this be completely finished and coming back and watching this and just seeing the, the growth. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I can't wait to do? <clears throat> what I can't wait to do, Co, is initiate you over the um, over the Arches of Haven song because there's a real, real um, procedure that every visitor to Thronefast has to go through. And yeah, when that's done, man, we'll do that. Yeah, I'm, I mean, just just from what I know about this game and how much care is going into all the locations, I even, it's the kind of thing where when this does come out and I start streaming it, I think we're probably going to do like a traveler series where we just play <laughs> someone that cool. wants to explore the entire world. That and uh, so maybe cool. maybe oh, we'll yeah. talk to you guys during some of that. We can bring you in and, and kind of like you're going over the lore right now, we can just go to different cities and you guys can talk about what you did with them and how you got to the point you are. And I, I really can't wait to do that. It's going to be a lot of fun. It sounds like a whole stream of DVD extras, man. <laughs> pretty much. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. That would be awesome. Like Any final thoughts, uh, Mr. Perkins? No, it's been, it's been wonderful to show, show this off. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I mean, the process itself, being able to be a part of it um, has been just really rewarding and refreshing for me. You guys, while I'm, uh, rambling on here want to come run up these stairs um, behind you if on the opposite side of the door there's some stairs in this wall you can run up to the top of the wall with me here and uh, get a nice view of the uh, city as a whole um, on my way I think uh, the, the only parting thought would be um, what I'm most excited about maybe is uh, w the, the one thing that's uh, that's lacking right now that um, maybe even here in a stream or two we could show a snippet of is just getting some life in the city and Jared mm -hmm. mentioned it earlier but one of the great things we can do with gray boxing is start um, dialing in actual NPC placement and uh, NPC routines so guards citizens wow. um, the different sectors and districts of the city um, we're gonna be starting to layer that in soon in preparation for pre-alpha 1 as well so while this is a lot of what you will be seeing in pre-alpha 1 um, oh. what what you have to look forward to um, is uh, all of the life um, in the city. And I was just sharing in the Discord chat, but uh, we actually do have our, our first um, perception storyline in Throne Fast already active here in the city. Um, we're just not showing it on the stream, but there will be some actual content here in the city as well um, to discover and, uh, and enjoy. So really, really excited. So just as a reminder, the uh, the last day to get onto the payment plan for pre-alpha is uh, November 26th, and the last, very last day to buy uh, 
the pledge for pre-alpha is uh, is on the on December twentieth. Um, so yeah, be a part of the the action. Watch the city, watch the world grow around you, and uh, and see how an MMO is made and comes to life. Mm, definitely. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> so just out of curiosity, is falling damage on? Yes, I oh, believe so. I should probably step away from well, the edge. <laughs> Find out how it, to know sure, we don't have oh, kills well. with us today, so somebody has to oh, fall oh, off the ledge. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's on! Oh, there he goes. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, Dang. That, yeah. Hey, death animation's <laughs> looking good. <laughs> you don't want to see that animation very often. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an EQ1 player, I'm used to it. All uh, right. <laughs> Co, thanks for having us. It was an awesome stream, man. Always a pleasure to be here. Uh, it is always a pleasure to have you guys. So cool meeting everyone today. A huge thank you again to Jared. Uh, first time on the stream. It is it is very clear, Jared, that you're approaching this project with passion. And I oh, think man. these days, to be honest, a lot of games lack that. Um, so it's, it's really, really great to know um, that you're on the team. And this is going to be good, man. I can't wait to see more. I really can't wait oh. to see more. Cheers, Ko. Thank you, matey. Yeah, this is great. Well, Ben, anything else from you guys? I think that's it. If you want more information, if you want to sign up for those pledges, uh, now's your last chance. It's at PantheonMMO.com, and you can find out all of the packages available there. And we'll see some of you in pre-alpha in time for the holidays. Awesome, awesome. And one last time, I'm going to turn my camera off for anyone on YouTube, and I'm going to go real quick through these pictures for anyone that would like to pause these and read more of them, because there's a lot of great information in some of these pictures. Uh, yeah, just pause, and you can take a longer look at them. So, very, very cool. Thanks for that. Well, again, a huge thank you to Ben, Chris, and Jared. It has been nothing but a pleasure. I am already anxiously awaiting our next stream. And uh, <laughs> thank you guys, <laughs> as always, for being here. Thank, thank you, Co. You. Cheers. You're welcome, All right, bro. my friends. Well, that is going to do it today, guys. I, I really hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did, because... I, I can't wait to play this game. I have been waiting for a game like this uh, for over a decade, maybe even closer to two. And uh, I know it's going to take a little bit longer for this to get here, but frankly, at this point, we've already waited this long. I just, I just can't wait for it to be here. I can't wait for it to be here. So anyway, guys, thank you all for being here. Big shout out and thank you to the Visionary Realms team for letting us do this. I uh, really do appreciate it. We are just another group of fans to this project. And again... Can't wait to see it getting developed. Uh, hopefully we'll bring some more fun streams to you moving forward. Uh, no announced times or dates right now, of course. But keep your eyes on our Twitter. And, uh, and all the information will be here as soon as we get it. So on that note, guys, thank you all so much for being here. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are around the globe. Uh, tomorrow is more Neo and uh, maybe some other stuff as well. Should be fun. Starting at 8 a.m. EST as we always do. As a reminder, if you want any more information on Pantheon, you can type exclamation point Pantheon with it followed by a question mark in our chat. That'll get you linked up to the website where you can get more information, which there's tons of it on, including if you do decide to support it, um, more information on that. Now, as a reminder, I saw some comments about this in chat. Guys, don't see the alpha for this game as buying into an alpha you can play and enjoy. That's not what they want from you. If, if you do end up donating to the project enough to get into alpha they're wanting you to help with the game they want people who are going to play it report bugs give suggestions give feedback that kind of stuff it's not like a buy to play early situation unfortunately most companies over the last 10 to 20 years have kind of ruined what alpha beta pre-alpha like they've taken that and turned them into marketing terms however this project is actually sticking true to what alpha and beta actually mean so just keep that in mind moving forward and um, that's really about it. So anyway, guys, again, thank you so much for being here. Hope to see you all here tomorrow. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.